extreme version of Chrome here with like a crazy theme. Yeah. Um, so, yo, yo, how's it going? Hi, I'm John. Uh, I'm going to show you a really quick walkthrough of something that we did uh, with D3 that was just an ad week, which we thought was kind of cool. Um, so this is like D3 uh, sort of on the big screen. So I work for a company called 140 Proof. Uh, and one of the things we do is we uh, do a lot of stuff with social data. And so we did a comparative study by looking at uh, location as something that's self-reported versus location that's observed. So I can claim that I am uh, in San Francisco by putting that on my Twitter profile, but I might be actually tweeting from Oakland. And so there's a disparity from where I am to where I say I am. And so because we see a ton of data and because a lot of app developers use our API and they may be passing us like user-reported uh, user geodata, we can kind of look at the comparison. So what I thought I'd do is do a quick walkthrough of how this works. And this is something I did with Vanessa here and Kumar who just, uh, just took off. So the tools that we use for this, uh, D3, we use something called TopoJSON, which is awesome. Uh, it's a way to basically load in uh, geodata. We used a GIS data that you can get from Tiger, which is basically from the US Census. Uh, but it allows you to load it into D3 in, in a very smart, simple way. Uh, we use MySQL, Montec, and a couple other things. And so this, this difference between stated and observed, um, there's a location field in your profile. You might be posting a check-in to Facebook post or something like that. Or you might also be just mentioning a location in your content. Versus observed location, we talk about mobile IPs or GPS data that's attached to your content. Um, I don't know how many of you have done geolocation using something like the MaxMind database. Uh, or have any, ever done IP geolocation? It's kind of a mess, like IP is not a great indicator of geo, but it's, it's the best we have sometimes. <clears throat> so in this case here, uh, in the content of a tweet, I'm saying, hey, we're in Soma, uh, and then there's actually uh, geolocation data that's attached to the tweet. So Twitter has metadata that's bound up in there, a side of 140 characters, so it knows I'm in San Francisco. So that would be self-reported location. Here's the Foursquare checking, the same thing. Uh, and so we can get a little bit of zoom match. No. <laughs> Sweet. Command plus. Yeah, I, that's what I'm doing, buddy. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I think it's doing a smart. Control and scroll wheel. Yeah, I did that too, but he has that turned off. So. Um, <laughs> but imagine, uh, I could take a screenshot and zoom in on that. But what you're seeing, so uh, has anybody ever heard of Edward Tufte? Uh, so the modern god data visualization. So he has this concept of small multiples, which is using the same uh, same structure and repeating it to allow your eye to see data patterns across these. So here you see the SF Bay Area, and what we're doing is we're highlighting the difference between where people said they were and where they actually were on a map. So in the case of San Francisco, there's a, a highlighted little region here around SF proper, and then these are all the different places where you might actually have been, even though your, your bio said that you were in San Francisco. <laughs> Similarly for Oakland, so if you said you were in Oakland, there was even more of a spread. You were actually not that likely to be in Oakland, <laughs> somewhere else. Uh, the internal name, we, we have this visualization called Spotted in the Burbs, because there's a lot of people who kind of claim, claim credit for the city, but then they pop up in other places. Um, here was one for LA, and it may not be as, as visible to you guys, but uh, we're starting Santa Monica. LA is the second one here that has all the blue on it. Uh, Long Beach, Irvine, uh, Santa Ana, Compton. Um, and that's it. So I'm happy to talk about this in more detail, but I know we don't have a lot of time for one of the people to get to present. So thanks. Hey, guys. So um, what is the shape of a conversation? <laughs> we've, we've had a couple of here where uh, we've had a couple of, uh, of, um, of uh, awesome speakers speaking to you and we've asked a couple of questions back and they've, uh, and they've replied. That could be one pattern. Um, may, maybe you started talking to, to your neighbor and you had a couple back and forth and, and the third person chimed in and then the first person dropped off. And that could be another pattern. Um, but so, uh, uh, so what I'd like to share with you guys today is a couple of uh, quick D3 sketches I've, um, I've, um, I've, um, I've created investigating that question of what does a conversation look like? How would we visualize a conversation? So, um, 
these uh, these are all kind of kind of half baked ideas. Um, if you think any of this is cool, I'd love to uh, talk to you afterwards and develop them into more of a full fledged summary. So the so the first thing is if we want to visualize something, then we need to quantify it, right? Um, so how do you quantify a conversation? Well, uh, the easiest way um, just go to Reddit. Uh, <laughs> Let me see if I can hear this. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so if you guys have uh, been, have been on Reddit, then the way that these things work is uh, some, some, somebody publishes something, and then and then you go back and forth. A couple of memes are put in, a couple of cats are drawn. But you've got this kind of a high, a hierarchical back and forth, and like oftentimes you you go a couple levels deep into the hierarchy, and then you completely lose. Uh, Track of uh, what the kind of thread is about. So, so the first thing that I started to ask is, well, um, what uh, what does a conversation look like from from ten thousand feet? Um, and so I and so I quickly did did this kind of tree tree structure where you can go th go through and uh, maybe, uh, maybe investigate these uh, these things jump down uh, jump jump back up move move left move uh, move right and the whole idea is like this gives you uh, kind of a higher level level view and so these and so the structure going on here uh, uh, becomes a little bit apparent. Um, the 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 text display still still needs a bit of work, but the interesting thing here is uh, is this is this visualization at the top. Now, what this is showing is it's based on the reply level, but there's all uh, uh, but there's a lot more d uh, data captured here. And so, how could we do that? Well, uh, what if on this y-axis um, instead of making it based on the level, we we did it based on the time of the post. Um, and so we can create a cool little D3 transition like that. And now you start to get a sense of uh, what the pace of the conversation looks like, like how, uh, how, uh, how quickly people re re reply, where the activity is. Um, and, uh, and we can keep on re rearranging this in, in different ways according to whatever metric we derive from the conversation. Um, and so, uh, so that was kind of cool. But then I started wondering, well, what other metrics uh, can we, can we come up with? And so, and so this is the kind of data point slide, uh, where uh, where where I looked at um, all the kinds of metrics that we could possibly find. Um, and so we, uh, and so what you see on the left is a D three force diagram of the authors, and and uh, on the right. Is a force diagram um, of the actual comments, um, and so uh, so the whole point is to look at both the comments and the people behind the comments, um, and so I uh, and I uh, and so and so all of the authors are connected by uh, by who they re reply to, and in this case it it tends to be fo focused mostly on the uh, on the, uh, on the guy at the beginning. Um, but uh, but you also start to see all these interlinkings be, between the authors, and if you want to start looking at different things, uh, let's say that we want to uh, 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 color them by by different metrics, like which of uh, uh, which of these comments have the most the most numbers um, of uh, authors in the um, branch. Uh, me, Meaning, like, which uh, were the most participatory uh, ones? What, uh, which uh, ones had the uh, had the most number of uh, comments per author? Um, and so, and so that can indicate a really cool back and forth. Um, and, and there's uh, and there's all these interactive his, uh, histograms that 
Uh, they, they, you can see well, like most of the comments uh, had this intermediate popularity, a, a, a couple were, were bigger. And the, uh, the whole point is to interlink these and um, interconnect these and see which, uh, uh, which um, authors had, uh, had which kind of uh, traits, uh, which, uh, which comments had what kind of activities, when did, when did this happen, uh, 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 basically explore the structure of this um, conversation. Now, this is all a stack analysis, and what's really missing here is the interactive pacing of the conversation. Um, and so that's what this uh, what this final sketch is um, is about. And here um, again, I'm using the D3 force diagram. Um, except this is now more of a interactive buildup. And, and my inspiration here is that as people come into the conversation, jump out of the conversation, um, I'm, uh, I'm reminded a lot of fireflies just, uh, just, uh, just floating around, flashing at each other, maybe wandering off, uh, coming, uh, coming back in. And so each of these dots is, uh, is a individual author. Um, these, these, the slider shows a, a certain lifespan life for their comment, and as the uh, and, uh, and, uh, as the thread lives, then uh, then uh, then it's kind of joined together, and so you start to see a couple of um, of uh, really in um, interesting things. Like if you look at this little branch here, uh, you see uh, you see that it, that it keeps on getting more and more activity. And then, uh, and then that thread kind of dies, jumps off, and so uh, and so the individual authors uh, kind of kind of fade fade off into the nebulous crowd. Um, and uh, and and part of what inspired this is uh, there's a really smart guy out of Stanford called Brett Victors. Uh, he does a lot of really cool cool stuff in in data visualization. But he had this comment um, where a lot of the medium of the computer is kind of lost because uh, because uh, because uh, a lot of what we call data visualization, uh, we're basically drawing bar charts and line charts and uh, and all of that, and we're really missing the point of the computer, which is which is simulation, which is capturing a lot of these dy uh, dy dynamics. Of a of a situation, um, and so and so here as we're winding the clock backwards, uh, then uh, then then people fade fade out of existence, and then we spin time forward, and they're uh, and they're and they're coming back in. So uh, that's a couple of uh, my sketches, just uh, just playing around with the idea of what does a conversation look like, how can we visualize it. Um, if you'd like to know anything more, find me afterwards and let's grab a beer. Thanks.